Greetings, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you are doing well. This is uh, Mathematics. In this presentation, we want to look at these questions you are seeing on the board. The questions are coming from 2023 General Certificate of Education, GCE, Paper 1. And we want to look at the first three. One, two, three. So please pay attention so that you understand everything that will be discussed in this presentation. Well, paper one, I must mention that you will not be allowed to use a calculator. That's the first thing. The second one, you need to know that omission of essential working will result in loss of marks. How do I mean? Let's begin. Then you understand what I mean by that statement. The first one here says evaluate 3 to the power 2 plus 3 to the power negative 1 times 2 to the power 0. Two marks. Okay? Now you need to get these two marks. How? One understand the topic from which the question is coming from. Identify the topic. What topic is this? These are indices or index notation. That's the first thing. But if you cannot identify the topic, definitely it will be hard for you to um, answer that question. Why? You might start thinking that this is trigonometry. Ah, no, I think this is not trigonometry. It must be calculus. You see that? So the moment you refer to those topics, you will not be able to remember what you've learned under that topic. That's the first thing. Identify the topic. The second one, understand the meaning of the STEM word that they have used. In this case, the STEM is evaluate. We cannot say factorize. We can't say solve. No. But evaluate. So if you can't understand the meaning of evaluate, you won't an answer. Or you will answer it in a wrong way. Simplify here. That is the stem of the question. Factorize here. That is the stem of the question. You can't start simplifying this. No. You are factorizing. That is what they want you to do. So you fail questions or exam, possibly not because you don't know how to go about it, but basically you don't understand the stem of that question. Now that we know that this is coming from indices and the stem here says evaluate, meaning you find the exact value of this. How do we go about it? 3 to the power 2. I see that? 3 to the power 2. Under indices, 3 to the power 2 does not mean 3 times 2. No, but 3 times 3. So this is 3 times 3. Remember, calculators are not allowed. So you have to be very accurate in terms of answering questions. So 3 times 3, it means 9. You write 9 there. Plus... Here we have 3 to the power negative 1. We have a negative power. Just a negative here. Indice says it means 1 over. Just the negative. You remove the negative here. It is 1 over. What are you going to remain with? A 3 here and a 1. The negative has gone. Where? 1 over. So we have changed from this format to this. Times... 2 to the power 0. Indices says any number or variable raised to the power 0, the answer will always be 1. So here it is a 1. You continue. 9 plus 1 over 3. So 3 to the power 1 will just be 3. Times 1, of course, this is times 1. We can just leave out because that is times 1. But if there was any other number here, Make sure you follow body mass because we have a plus and multiplication here. So you follow board mass. You follow board mass here. Don't just add, then you multiply. That would be wrong. That is as good as saying 1 
plus two times three. If I ask you to say what is the correct answer here, some of you start saying, look, this is nine, what, which is not correct. You will be able to add, then multiply. That is wrong. You multiply first, then you add. So the answer here should be able to give you what? Um, seven. You see that? So at this point now, you are going to add. Now remember addition of fractions without the calculator. You have a fraction here. You are going to make this as a fraction. How? It will be 9 over 1. Next, common denominator. Have you seen that? Which is 3. We have a 1 here and a 3. So it will be 3. How many ones are in 3? 3 times 9? 27. So we have 27 here. Plus, how many 3's are in 3? 1. Times 1? 1. You are going to add on top there which will be 28, okay, over 3. You can leave it there. You can leave it here. But if you don't want to leave it there, you can still write in mixed fraction, where you'll be able to say how many 3s are in 28. Of course, that will be 9, remainder 1, over 3. So even there, that is correct. How do you get the 2 marks here? So we are going to say... The method mark that you are able to show the work will give you what we call method mark 1. And the answer mark here will be given. You get the two marks. Just like that. Very simple. We'll give you that. We move on to the second question. Simplify 2 in brackets. We have x plus 3y uh, minus 3. We have 4x minus 2. Two marks given. What are you doing here? You are simplifying. You are shortening the number of terms. You are not evaluating. You are shortening the number of terms. What topic is this? This is algebra now. You are saying, oh, under algebra, there's grouping, collection of like terms, what and all those things will come in. Then you start. The question has got brackets here. So if the question has got brackets, that is where you are going to start from. Remove the brackets. But how do you go about it? You start multiplying. If it doesn't have, you go straight and collect like terms. So here you're going to remove the brackets. This we're going to say two times x, it will be two x here. Plus two times three here, it will give us six y. Minus three times four will give us a twelve. There's x here. Then this negative, this is where you need to be very careful when you are multiplying. This negative and negative will change to positive. You see that? Then 3 times 2 will give us a 6. That is where we are going to be. Next, at this point now, brackets have gone. Next step is collection of like terms. Those that are like terms must be put together. So we have 2x. So I've got 2x here. Okay. Do I have another pair? Here. So, minus 12x. Remember that you are simplifying, so there is no change of sign. This is not solving, where you need to say, oh, negative 12x here, when it comes here, it will be positive. No. No. So, it will remain the way it is, negative 12x, negative 12x. Then I've got a plus c. 6y here. So I've got 6y, then I've got here, plus c, 6. When you collect like terms together, it means those that are the same can be added or subtracted. We have x, x. These are like terms. So I'll be able to say 2 minus 12. Integers, some will be able to write 10, which is wrong. The correct answer there is negative 10. See that? The variable is x. Then we have plus 6y plus 6. You see that? What do you do there? That is where now some of you students who go on add this plus this, you, you are done. You've reached the point there. You are done. Look at this observation. Are you seeing any equal sign here? There are those of you now who would want to say, no, you are very smart, you know, to what? You start putting equals, equals, equals. That is wrong. Equal sign must be applied when they say solve. 
Don't put eco signs here, eco sign, eco sign. That is wrong. So the two marks there will be able to give you in this manner. Okay, you multiply that and that so it will be able to give you the method mark at that point or this point and also the answer mark one there. You get it. Just like that. Factorize completely. What are you doing? You are factorizing here. This is also coming from algebra. You need to understand that when they say factorize, the types of factorization must come into your head. I see that it is opposite way of saying to expand. Opposite. When you say expand, then when you say factorize, that is opposite. So here you are factorizing, fact out what is common. Now, how do you go about it? You look at the question that has been given. Here, the question is 3x squared minus 27. That is the question. Factorize. You look at the question that has been presented to you. Then count the number of terms that has been given. Okay? Count the number of terms that have been given. Here we have 1, 2. If it is 2, then conclude. Get me very well there. Two terms. If you are given two terms, they can be fractions, they can be decimals, as long as there are two terms. And in between the two terms, there's a minus. Just know that you are dealing with the difference of two squares. That is the type. Remember, we have common factorization. We have got difference of two squares. We also have quadratic factorization that we have three terms. If you find that the question has got four terms, then you are dealing with the grouping four terms. Three terms, quadratic. Two terms, like this, difference of two squares. Now that you know that this is difference of two squares, the method will come in. I have to express everything in a square form. That is difference of two squares. Can three be expressed in square form? The answer is no. Meaning, I have to perform common factorization first. So I'll be able to say, okay, fine, 3 can go into 27. So I'll be able to write 3 like that. What am I going to remain with here? x squared minus, how many 3's are in 27? So it'll be 9. Are you done? Not yet. Completely, this is not done. At that point, you get answer mark. I mean, you get method mark there for doing common factorization. Then you are going to proceed and say, inside here, 9 can be expressed in a square form. So I'll be able to say 3, x squared minus 9 will be written 3 squared. That is 3 times 3, that will give you 9. What next? What we have inside the brackets are in square form. You ignore the squares. Just write the bases. And this is what will be able to happen. This is 3, use square brackets, the first bracket will have x minus 3, like this. The second one, you just change the sign, x plus 3, then this. This is now your final answer, and that is it. Now the answer mark, which will be 1. You get the full 2 marks. Please, this is what I want you to go and do on that day you know the day understand the stem of the question understand identify the topic from which the question is coming from then do what is needful would you like to learn more well you will do well to join our online whatsapp classes very reliable I must tell you We'll be together until the last day at 04. To make the payment, it is very, very affordable. You WhatsApp me on 0969 or 0777-448-440. These are the two contacts. You make the deposit. 
you send the screenshot on WhatsApp on both no, in either of the two. You send the screenshot together with your name and the subjects that you have paid for. Will be added to the learning groups. Just like that. Subjects are available, currently available. We have mathematics, English language, biology, 5124, science, that is physics, chemistry. We also have junior secondary, that is grade 8 and 9. Please join us. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen.